Hi, this is Tim of the 1916 Company. Welcome and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, my email is still tmasso at thewatchbox.com. It's in the description below. Please reach out to me for pricing. Concerning this or any of our watches, that's tmasso at thewatchbox.com for pricing. In 2014, Cartier launched its first dive watch, the modern era, the Calibre de Cartier Diver. The following year, it followed up with this variant, ADLC coated stainless steel and rose gold. So the Calibre de Cartier Diver might be what the 2010 Calibre de Cartier should have been from the beginning. It's actually thinner than the standard watch. 42 millimeters in diameter, only 11.2 millimeters thick, making it one of the thinnest dive watches on the market. 48.5 millimeters from lug tip to lug tip with a 23.5 millimeter spacing between the lugs. We'll throw this watch on my wrist of 16 centimeters and get a sense of its fit. It fits nicely. As you can see, with the lugs relatively short across the wrist and then firmly thrusting downward, it wraps around the wrist to the point where I could recommend this watch for a wrist of 14 centimeters circumference. Although the case side looks a little bit sheer and flared, in fact, it is so thin it'll slide easily underneath a dress cuff. Taking a look down the barrel, you can see the lugs are nowhere near the edge of my wrist and even over the top, which often exaggerates the width of the watch, it's still inboard of the edges. The strap is high grade. I like the fact that Cartier has created a little revetment or recess within the case so that the strap can be super close to the case flank, creating a seamless look. You can just barely see any daylight between strap and case. That's a really nice feature first because it integrates them visually, but also because that little recess means there's no impingement of the motion of the strap. See how it has a full range of motion and it can pull 90 degrees down from the horizontal of the case if you have that smaller wrist. The strap has little diamond relief pattern on the top. On the bottom, you can see this is a brand new Cartier factory strap. We have an ADLC, amorphous diamond-like carbon-coated stainless steel buckle here, which has a nice little detail in that the bevels are polished and the rest is satinated. The case also ADLC coated, and once again, we have those little polished highlights. Now, it is an extremely resilient material, which is why looking close to the case, you can see there are only the slightest marks get even a few inches away and they disappear. This is an extraordinarily durable material. And as you could see, there's hardly a mark on this watch, despite the years it's been around. We have a combination of polish, satination, we have recesses on the screw fixed crown guard structure, a faceted spindle within a polygonal polished crown, which by the way is a screw down crown, 300 meters water resistant. And then the watch includes the lugs that are slightly broken out from the case band, just a little bit. So they have a sculptural form of their own tapering downward to a rounded end. The bezel, which pivots on ball bearings, has an incredibly smooth 120 click action. It is really refined to the point that it gives Rolex a run for its money and it would end in a dead heat. I couldn't honestly tell you which one is better, only that they might be co-equally the best. You can see that the bezel unconventionally is actually dished inward a little bit all the way around, which gives it a unique aesthetic. On the blue bezels, we have ceramic, but on the black bezels, we have ADLC, which, well, it's actually more fracture resistant than the ceramic. It is possible theoretically to dent it, but it's very rare to fracture it, whereas ceramic can chip and break. This is a much hardier material. The edge of the bezel is solid gold and has a wonderfully sharp knurling. It makes it easy to grip when your hands might be wet, sweaty, or gloved. You line up that luminescent index, and this is a unidirectional bezel. You can shorten your dive, but not extend your dive. Now you have a zero to 60 minute count up timer, which I often find on any dive watch is more useful than a chronograph timer. You can also see how the dial is generously luminescent with the enormous luminescent Roman numeral 12, the second subdial down at 6 o'clock luminescent, and you can see whether the watch is running in the dark. Not every dive watch has a luminescent seconds hand. Cartier, which put this watch through the ISO 6425 test to make it an official ISO dive watch, it knew that you needed to see running seconds in the dark because you're supposed to have a operation indicator on a dive watch. Having luminescent seconds means you have that operation indicator day or night. We have hands as well as seconds frame and date aperture in rose gold. We have radially arrayed Roman numerals, actually radially red Roman numerals on the top. They are stick indices at the bottom. There's a concentric striation that sits underneath the hour track. We have extended broadsword style hands for the hours and minutes. We have a triple date, so if 
by chance, one of the hands is covering the primary date. You can see the preceding and succeeding date, know what date it is currently. Look carefully, and you can see the, frankly, not-so-secret Cartier signature up at 10 o'clock, but still, it's expected, and it is present. The watch has two subsidiary setting modes, one of which is hacking or stop seconds, and then the other one is a quick set system for that date so you can rapidly cycle the date should the watch run down or encounter an irregular length month. Not much to see on the case back, though inside we have a Cartier movement. This is a drop-in replacement for the ETA 2892A2. This is the 1904 MCPS Petite Second automatic winding, 48-hour power reserve, stop seconds, quick set, 4 hertz operating rate, that's 8 beats per second, 27 joules, and it has twin mainspring barrels, which is a nice refinement on a basic automatic caliber because it makes for a very flat torque delivery to the escapement, so you don't have a big surge when it's fully wound. It won't run fast when fully wound, nor will it run really slow after 18 or 24 hours. Having twin barrels in series with phase mainsprings does away with that and of course the watch is an ISO 6425 diver there are a lot of watches on the market that look like dive watches but aren't actually this meets the ISO definition of a dive watch and that has existed since 1996 which means in addition to its 300 meter rating this watch would have been tested during its development phase to 125 percent of the face value water resistance so it's even going above and beyond that's what separates a real dive watch from a dive watch-shaped object. Reach out to Team Also at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.